Each year, the Double Decker Arts Festival takes over the square in Oxford turning the picturesque town into one of the finest music venues in the South. This weekend, the Rebel Baseball program hits the big stage once again. But for this group, the SEC spotlight has proved to be dangerous. My drive at Bastine, can he get back to the base? Out, it's a double play, and the <laughs> Commodores get the sweep. They finish it off with a spectacular play, Jonathan Bastine. They go up and get the strikeout. Neely gets Alderman and the Gators win this one. To left, that's going back at the track. And the junior from Hallettsville just dropped a hammer on the Rebels. He wins it for the Aggies with the Olsen Magic. Won't get it there. Breaking ball by Wood. It goes a career distance today and closes it out for the Hawks. They win it 6-4 to four and the series in the process. Lifted down the left field line and that ball is gone. A three-run home run and LSU sweeps Ole Miss. As their tour winds down, the club desperately needs to have its best performance. Since Scott doesn't want to invest in a $2 uh, a two dollar can opener, he just puts the screwdriver on there and makes me hold the can for him. It works just as well. All right, these are uh, chicken swirls made in Selma, Alabama from Mark Smart. It's chicken, prosciutto, and then wrapped in bacon. Really good. That's our, that's our main entree. And then our sod scoot is two cups white rice, four cans beef consomme, stick of butter, and put it in here for an hour. Uh, I should probably turn that on. Don't forget the veggies. We got veggies too. No, we don't. It all started like when Yellowstone first came out, and Cal and I, one of us would take turns cooking for each other on Sundays afternoon, or Sunday evenings, and then we'd watch Yellowstone. And that's kind of how this has gotten going, and now just every off day, one of us takes turns cooking for the other, which usually steak, chicken, Burgers, it just kind of depends on the weekend. And since we do this every week, I feel like it helps us just kind of relax off the field and get our minds right so when we do go back to the field, we can perform at the best of our ability. Would you not agree with that? Yeah, I agree. I think it's a good little mental reset. For the fellowship. Yeah, yeah a lot of fellowship, fellowship happens on these nights, just kind of like a mental break. So when you go back to practice tomorrow at 2.30, have a clear head. I guess you're like the quarterback still at the same time, but you're not really calling the plays um, per se since Coach B is calling pitches. I think really it's just my job to make sure they stay in the zone and my body language is really good back there to keep them confident on the mound and just kind of almost be like a liaison, I think is the right word, between Coach B, like if he's talking to my ear and I need to go out and talk to them or really whatever Coach B wants me to do. I think the most important thing is from a team standpoint, uh, obviously being the catcher, you know, you got to win. So. Uh, no matter what I do individually, it doesn't really matter. I'd rather go open four all three games and, and sweep. Two, two palms of palm pressing. I mean, if you look at it here, it's about two palms. It's, a palm. it's pretty close. Kimberl did great on the chicken. The rice is, it's phenomenal. Good. Yeah, consistently. You can't mess it up. Like, you just put it all together and you throw it in the oven. Um, it's, it's great. It's really good. Food. It's solid. Very solid. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. hey. Package at the door. One bite of Brainos rules. It's a 9-3. It's really good. A what? A 
Nine three. Don't don't beg for anything higher either. It's an honest review. All right, thanks y'all for the fellowship. Hopefully the food was good. We'll see y'all this weekend at Swayze. You got to get back into the moment. You got to get back in the moment tonight. You got to continue to fight, continue to compete. Because ask the guys that were here last year, because half of you weren't. I don't think all of a sudden they felt great. But they got back into it, continued to fight, and won a pitch, won an inning, won a game. And then I did it the next day. Won a pitch, won an inning, won a game. And as I started this talking about Arkansas, it's amazing how they were 4-11 and 11 and then played pretty well last week, won three close games, and all of a sudden it's a different mindset for everybody, the perspective around them, the, how they feel, and so on. And so you can shut out all that crap and just get back into you know, who we are, what we are, and get after it. Why? Because that's how you're supposed to play. That's how you're supposed to play when you're 15 and 3, and that's how you're supposed to play when you're 3 and 15. It's just a lot harder when you're 3 and 15. You can sit there and be miserable, or you can get in a fight. That's it. You can say, I want it. Give me the ball. Hit the ball to me. I want a bat in that situation. We need some stars. No, don't have to be the stars every night, but we need some stars tonight. Quit worrying about just helping and win us the game. So if you want to stop feeling bad, if you want to stop feeling sorry for yourself, man, get in the frickin' fight and decide, do you want this or not? And if you do, keep fighting. You never know what'll happen. Bases loaded, one out, top of the second. Georgia trying to strike first. Scorches this to left. Alderman on the run, drops in front of him. From third base, Wagner scores without a throw. And the Bulldogs lead one to nothing in the top half of the second. The 2-0, ground ball towards Chatagne, he'll glove, flip to Gonzalez, he'll throw to first, not in time, a run will score. The Rebels found themselves down early once again, looking for answers. Takes that one outside for ball four, and McCants gets the walk. There's a start for the Rebels. Even if he just walks, it's an automatic double, maybe even a triple, because he, I mean, it's, it's either first or second pitch and he's gone. There he goes, here's the pitch. Low, throw to second, one hopper, skips into center field. McCants jumps up, now he's gonna try to get to third. Here's the throw, and he's safe at third base. I get on first, and it doesn't go in front of me. I just, you know, tell myself I'm gonna get to second base, and, uh, you know, if Coach Clem doesn't give me the red light, I'll get to third base too. First and third, no outs for Gonzalez. Swung on, high fly ball, center field. Going back is Anderson. He's got room, a step from the warning track, makes the catch, tagging at third and coming home is McCants. Chatagne tags and advances to second. That was a heck of an effort by Peyton. Chatagne is going to steal third, and the pitch is high for a ball. They weren't paying any attention to him. And he'll get a steal, and that's two steals in the inning. It's been a while. Um, part of that is you have to get on base to steal. So, um, But um, in the hitters meeting, Coach Cleary had mentioned something about something that the pitcher was doing. Um, so it was easy. Uh, it was an easy read at second base. So I just I figured I'm going to go ahead and go right now. Ole Miss really pressing the gas on the bases here. Leje punches this through the left side hole. Here comes Shotye. Tying Abe. This season has been especially difficult for fan favorite Peyton Chatagnier. But even in hard times, the second baseman always has time for the Swayze faithful. It's more than just if we win or lose, you know, they're kind of there to support us. We got people sending us letters every day and, you know, in our, in our lockers or making us brownies before the games or cookies, whatever it may be. I and mean, it just shows that, you know, I think they truly care about us, which is really cool. We got the best fans in the country. We all want to strive to be like Peyton, the type of person he is, and someone that, for example, the kids game that we played yesterday, everybody's favorite player is Peyton. Everybody's is. And there's a reason for that. These are the guys, these are the true fans. These are the guys that have been with us all year round. Um, we wouldn't be here without them. This is just really special for us. And I know it's cool for them, but believe it or not, it's even cooler for us just to have all these guys supporting us. Um, so we thank you. We thank everybody. This is, this is awesome. It means a lot to us in this program to have these guys behind us like this. And, um, 
We really couldn't have done it without him. Seriously. Sometimes it's really cool, and sometimes I'm like, all right, hey, I'm not going with you anymore. If we walk through the Grove for a football game, if we're going to the baseball tent, it's going to take us 45 minutes to get to the baseball tent because every single person is going to stop. Like, Yo, Peyton, Peyton, let's take a picture. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just standing there like, all right, this is awkward. I never dreamed of, of having people stop me in the street and, and take a picture of me or want an autograph. I think it's the coolest thing ever. This place has exceeded my expectations without a doubt. I mean, I never thought I would be in this position talking to you on this camera and signing autographs, taking pictures, and it's really, really special. And on this day, the Texan once again brought the crowd to its feet with a roar. Swung on, fly ball, center field, going back is Anderson. with a straightaway bomb. Felt really good off the bat, but then I saw it go into center field, and I got worried that it was gonna be like too much on the line and they were gonna catch it, but I was kinda running. I never even saw it go out, but then I heard the music start playing. I was like, all right, I hit homers. As Chatonnier exited the stage, he tossed his hot bat right back into the furnace. All kinds of crazy shifts going on, even with the bases loaded. So I'm square around the bunt, and, I was, and then I just saw them freak out. I was like, I know he's not going to bunt. I don't even know if he knows how to bunt. But uh, And then he pulls it back really early, and they were still freaking out on defense. Very extreme shift, because I'm a very big pull hitter. And what they didn't know is I can also go oppo if I really want to, and if I try to. Here's the pitch, ground ball, third baseline, fair, just inside the bag. This is a monster. One scores, two score. I mean, I don't think he tried to hit it to third, but he might say he tried to do it, but he just found the perfect place to hit it. With the lead in hand, the closing act was a familiar one, making his return to the spotlight once again. It, it was a good feeling to go back out there and, and be in those situations to win a game. When you're, when you're pitching as a starter, you're setting your team up to win, but unless it's an unbelievable day, you're not pitching, pitching in the eighth or the ninth to, to win a game. So to be in those situations at the end is, is a really cool feeling. Playoff pitch. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Yeah, yeah, come on. Strike three, locked him up. To be able to hand the ball to him, you know, late in the game, I think, you know, was a huge confidence boost for everyone. Two, two, two outs. Swing and a miss, gets him the chase. Doherty's pumped up. And his pitch, swing and a miss, jammed him with a fastball up and in. Paxton misses the one-two pitch to Will David. Swung on, line to straightaway center. Groff has the catch, and that's the game. I wanted to end it there. Line out to center field, and the Rebels with a comeback victory over Georgia, 7-3. to three. Boy, it just feels good. Once J.D. came in, it was, it was over. He, that's the best I've, you know, he's looked all year. Our staff was really, really good today. Ground ball right back to the pitcher. Nice glove by Finley. Runs over to first. Flips to the first baseman, Harbor. And Georgia wins game number two as the Rebels come up empty in the ninth. No runs, one hit, no errors. And one man left. We tell you to keep showing up. Play with energy. But the part that we're missing from all of this, and you've heard a ton, you've heard it for today from Jonathan, is what do you learn from it, right? But at some point, you got to make a decision on what this is all about. Your job isn't just to frickin' wear it, right? Your job isn't just to accept it. Your job is to accept it and then figure out what the hell to do to change it, to fix it, to get better. Because I'm tired of this. At some point, you got to draw a line in the sand and compete and change it. When are you gonna just stop wearing it? When are you gonna respond? When are you gonna learn from it, make a decision to go forward, to be relentless? And that means, man, be tough every freaking pitch today. Believe, no negative thoughts. Really believe, believe in yourself and believe in your team. And to really be selfless, right? Accept the role that you've been given and execute the role that you've been given. Whatever that is, today, be reps. Go get them. He 
Ethan Leger. Hits this one high, deep left field. This ball is gone! Leger answered his director's cue, and his teammates followed the script to a tee. With the offense hitting its stride, frontman Grayson Sonye was putting together a breakout performance in front of thousands of red and blue fans. It's definitely been tough, you know, coming in, starting on the weekend as a freshman. But, you know, I I've learned that you know, I'm going to struggle through baseball. Um, I've been told that my whole life. Um, so just Coach B's, you know, been saying to us all year to keep showing up each and every day and keep going to work. More importantly, just to keep believing, believing in myself. So I think that's what I've tried to do is keep believing in myself and know like what I've done before, just gone to work and let everything else take care of itself. The simple word is work. You know, I think that's the, the great thing about him. He works his tail off. You know, he is, uh, he's constantly working on the side in all aspects of it. He's working on his delivery, he's working on his actual pitches, his body strength conditioning, you know, the, the kid puts in a, a ton of effort outside of the time you see him compete on the field. As Sonye wrapped up his performance, the lead looks safe. But in this league, nothing is ever as it seems. Georgia's come back twice in back-to-back -back weekends. A loop to right center field. Groff on the run, can't get there. Anderson trots home. Another runner comes home. Here comes Condon to throw to the plate. It's not in time. Georgia scores two. One run game in the eighth. Connor Tate touched home plate. Three runs here for Georgia in the eighth, and we're even at five. Sunday was was a battle. It was it was tough, but I knew my offense was going to pick me up. I mean, those guys weren't going to let us lose that game. Way inside, and that one's going to hit him in the hand. He gets first base. Wow, what a break for the Rebels. And a pitch. Swung on. Base hit to the right side. McCants is going to try to score. The right fielder will scoop it, throw to second instead. And the Rebels have regained the lead at 6-5 to five on an oppo base hit from Ethan Leisure. Green light, a loop into right. It lands. Gonzalez touches home. Ole Miss leads by two on back-to-back -back RBI singles. Ole Miss leading 7-5 to five today. The pitch swung on. High fly ball, right field. McCants going back at the wall. It's gone, and we're tied. Oh, my goodness. Ben Anderson gets only his third home run of the year, and it's 7-7. Seven to seven. It was a huge blow. I remember we were all cheering for JD, and the ball made contact, and we knew the wind was blowing hard out to white, like, really hard out to right. So I think our first initial reaction was like, dang it. You know, it, it's just, it's it's how the season's gone so far. We've, we've given up home runs in big spots. This is eerily similar to almost every weekend we've had. Oh. So I was thinking in my head, there's no, there's no possible way we're about to, we're about to do this again. The one-one to Groff, swung on, hit deep to left center field, pretty well stroked. It's at the wall. It's got a chance, and it's going to be caught by the center fielder Anderson as he robbed the home run. That would have been the game winner. He smoked that ball. I thought it was out off the bat. Everybody in the dugout thought it was out off the bat. We thought we had just won the game. You know, everybody was excited. Then we see him jump up and pull the ball back over. And it was, that was another gut punch. You know, it was just like, dang, can, can anything, you know, can we, can we just get one walk-off win on a home run, you know? We're on it just period, just one walk-off win. And so I think we just kind of had to reset after that. Larky had to go up there and not, uh, you know, try to hit a home run. Uh, he had to go and just get on base because that's what we needed. Third base line, fair ball. Calarco hits first. Big turn. Stays there. Let's go. Score a double. You don't have to be anything crazy, right? Yeah. Score a double, just be a good base runner. You yep. hear me? Yes, sir. Right. Let's go, baby. Let's go. With this situation, it was kind of last minute. I didn't know if I was coming in to pinch hit. I didn't know if I was coming in to pinch run. So I had batting gloves on, I had helmet on. I was just ready to roll. 
Way inside, it gets away, and now Unimark will scoot to second base. Yeah! Yeah! Initially going to the plate, I just wanted to, you know, get on base. Like, I, I didn't want to try to do too much and uh, end up striking out or something, so I was just trying to, you know, do what's best for the team, and that's me getting on base, so that's, that's all I was thinking about. Swung on, line drive, base hit to left! So at that moment, as soon as the ball pretty much was struck and went past the pitcher, I knew that I was being sent home. So I picked up Coach Clem and I just ran as hard as I could. Unimark's going to try to score. Left fielder's got it. Tate throws to the plate. One hopper and he is safe at home. He dropped the ball and the Rebels win. My helmet was on top of my head, so I couldn't see anything. And I probably didn't want to see anything either. I didn't want the umpire to you know, punch me out. But all I heard was, ball is out, safe, safe, safe. And then I hear Peyton Chatney come up and he's screaming. I hear Calvin Harris, Leger, all of them running towards TJ. So it was definitely a really cool moment. Yes, shoulder got banged up a little bit, but I would do that 100 times out of 100. TJ McCants gets mobbed and right. Ole Miss walks it off for their first SEC series win of the season. Let's go! Oh my gosh, that was awesome. Um, big days by a lot of people. Um, we've been waiting for a game to, to where we can finally close it out. It was a heartbreaking uh, um, shot by Groth there at the end, but luckily TJ got it done. Um, I was fired up for the boys. That was a great win. I felt pretty good. Uh, I wasn't mean. really even sweating when I got to the play. I was just trying to get a barrel on the ball. Uh, Really happy I could do it for my teammates though. Uh, we really needed that win, so happy I could, you know, produce a, a run in that situation. That's all I was worried about. For some reason, I just thought I needed to stay on second base just to be make sure. And when I saw everybody running out to TJ, I was like, oh, I might as well join him. Yeah. First SEC series win, it, it feels a lot better than it has been. And uh, we needed that. It, it was a lot of up and downs. Beautiful day. Fans showed up. It was great.